The goal of this video is to provide information about integrated pest management, how it overlaps with your environmental health program, and what to consider when weighing how local IPM requirements may relate to health inspections. You likely already know about Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, a multi-tiered approach to pest control that emphasizes preventative strategies such as sanitation and exclusion to eliminate the root causes of pest issues. When pests are found, low-risk control techniques are employed first to minimize potential hazards to people and the environment. This often means using pesticides only as a last resort, choosing physical or mechanical control methods instead. Because IPM reduces environmental hazards, including those represented by pesticides, IPM is often employed at schools and child care facilities to safeguard children's health. In some places, IPM is a requirement. When inspecting a facility as part of your environmental health program, much of what you consider already includes IPM principles, especially regarding food safety, sanitation, and the elimination of possible sources of food and shelter for pests. For example, an IPM inspector entering a school kitchen will look for many of the same things as an environmental health specialist. This might include checking the cooking equipment for grease or food accumulation, ensuring that food and non-food surfaces are cleaned regularly to avoid attracting pests, and inspecting drains to make sure that they don't have food or other debris that could attract mice, ants, or cockroaches. Maintaining and expanding upon this understanding of IPM best practices and IPM requirements can enhance inspections and environmental health recommendations made to schools. Additionally, in places where law establishes certain school IPM requirements, it's good to be aware of what obligations schools may have when performing your own analysis and recommending action. Here are some things to consider during your inspection. Local IPM laws. Some states, Oregon and California to name two, have laws requiring that public schools implement IPM, and those laws require specific actions in terms of sanitation, pest monitoring, and how pesticides can be used. This means that sometimes other criteria must be met in addition to what federal code requires. For example, Chapter 7 of the USDA School Food Safety Inspection Requirements discusses pesticide use including providing an explanation of the difference between general use and restricted use pesticides. Oregon's school IPM law goes beyond federal law on what products can be used in schools and also further restricts who can apply pesticides. In specific, schools must give preference to the use of non-chemical pest control measures. Therefore, if a pest is found, pesticides are not at the first line of defense. If a pesticide is going to be used, it must first meet the state requirements and be on the school's approved low-impact pesticide list. To be on this list, the pesticide must be of lower toxicity and it must not be classified as a human carcinogen or a probable or likely human carcinogen under the EPA guidelines. Any pesticide used, whether general or restricted use, must only be applied by a licensed pesticide applicator. The Oregon law also requires that each school district has a designated IPM coordinator and an articulated IPM plan. This plan outlines what the IPM coordinator's responsibilities are, including pest control actions and monitoring for pests. If pest issues are discovered during an environmental health inspection, the environmental health specialist could check to ensure that the kitchen staff know who their IPM coordinator is and that appropriate response is taken to alleviate the pest problem while also observing IPM requirements. Recommending to the school staff that they apply pesticides is problematic, at least in Oregon, because only licensed applicators are allowed to use pesticides under IPM law. However, pesticide use can be avoided in many cases simply by following the proper steps of IPM. Major infestations may be the exception to this rule, but even in those cases, pesticides will not completely solve the problem unless the root causes of those pest issues are also removed. In cases where pesticides are necessary, targeted applications of gel baits can be the safest and most effective choice. Another thing to consider is pest harborage. Aside from the pests themselves, if an inspection reveals potential pest harborage that could lead to pest problems, it's good to mention this to staff at the facility. For example, if you find that cardboard boxes are being used for long-term kitchen storage, this represents a risk for cockroach and rodent harborage, 
which are both common environmental health concerns. Cockroaches often enter schools in food boxes, and they can subsist on the adhesives used to bind cardboard together. So prompt removal of these boxes can do much in helping to eliminate both food and harborage for roaches. If time allows during an inspection, school staff would benefit from any recommendations that environmental health specialists can make regarding pest harborage. Another key part of IPM is monitoring, because it allows pests to be identified early before they become a significant problem. Schools that practice IPM should definitely be monitoring for pests, and any facilities that are required by law to practice IPM probably have specific monitoring practices that they follow. Environmental health specialists can play a helpful role by checking to see that schools are monitoring properly. This could be as simple as keeping an eye out for sticky traps placed around the kitchen, or, again if time allows, checking to see if the school has a schedule for placing and checking traps. To find detailed information about IPM requirements in your area, use the following links and resources. For more information about non-chemical pest control or information about specific health and environmental impacts of pesticides, see NCAP's websites at pesticide.org and sustainableplaces.org. For more videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash NCAPVIDS.